what up y'all it's bella back with another video i know it's been a long time but we're here won't even need no excuses or no none of that we're here okay so a lot has changed i literally packed up my life in atlanta and moved across the world and i was supposed to add in a moving vlog and all of that and i didn't and i'm sorry and i'm not going back to do it so we're just going to update you now on west t your girl moved across the I world i live in the middle east almost 22 hour flight away I really moved across the world, y'all. I'm on an eight-hour time difference, and it's insane. But I'm here to tell y'all everything about my move, everything you want to know. I asked on Instagram some questions, and I got a lot of good questions. So we're going to cover that in the video. If you want to know about this move to Manama, Bahrain, the kingdom of Bahrain, the beautiful Bahrain, stay tuned and watch the rest of this video. across the world and a lot of people have been DMing me asking me like are you gonna update us what made you move where are you what's going on so decided it's time to make a YouTube video to just explain it all and I have my list of things because I don't even know where to start it's a lot to cover so if it looks like I'm reading I am but I just want to make sure that I cover everything I did ask on Instagram what you guys want to know and I got a lot of good questions so thank you for those who responded and let's just go ahead and hop right into it so where am I I am in Manama Bahrain currently in the Middle East um, and I'll add a little map somewhere over here to show y'all exactly where it is a lot of people have never heard of it before but it's in the Middle East really close to Africa Saudi Arabia Dubai Egypt um, Israel yes so that's where I'm at currently um, and why did I move here and how long will I be here? So I'll kind of bundle those into one. So why did I move here? There's a number of reasons why I decided to make this move and I actually decided to make this move a year ago to date. I came out here last year, same time, December, January, to visit my parents. My dad is still currently active duty military and he's stationed here in Bahrain. So he lives here. My mom kind of goes back and forth between our home in Virginia and here. And when I came to visit last year for the holidays, I literally fell in love with this country, fell in love with the island. I knew I had to find a way to move out here. So I made it my mission all of 2022 to prepare for my move because I knew by December, I wanted to be here officially. And honestly, I'm proud of myself. A lot of people thought I was joking, I was lying. I was telling people all year, I'm moving across the world. They did not believe me, but here I am. And I love to be able to set goals like that and really see them come to fruition, come true, um, really put the work in to make it happen. So yeah, that's kind of the, I would say, overarching reason why I decided to move here. Now, why did I decide to move in general away from Atlanta? A number of reasons because I loved Atlanta, loved my friends there, loved my support system there, loved the city in general, but it was just time to go. So number one, to save money. Y'all know how expensive Atlanta is and the amount of money I was spending on rent, living in the city, on top of utilities, on top of a car note, I just knew I needed to cut back on my expenses if I wanted to reach my goals. And the next year, I want to be able to buy a home. There's a lot of other things I want to invest in and I want to accomplish. And in order to have that extended income or extra income to go ahead and put into different things, I knew the only way to make that possible was to cut my expenses drastically. And granted, I could have moved home to Virginia and lived with my parents there, but I have a love-hate relationship with Virginia. Love it for what it is. Don't think I would ever move back there unless I just absolutely had to. My parents needed me. So when my dad moved over here and I fell in love with this country, I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity to go ahead, make that sacrifice and be able to save money. So I'm here, y'all, saving money. This is the first time I've ever lived with my parents since I graduated high school. It's a huge adjustment, but it's definitely worth it. And this is a beautiful country. So why not do it when I'm here, able to experience a whole new culture, a whole new area, etc. So I'm saving money and that we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's number one reason why I moved here. 
Number two, I already said new experiences. I grew up in Japan. My mom did 30 years in the military. My dad is at 35, going to 40 years in the military. My whole life has been centered around the military and moving, trying new cultures, trying new things. So I get the itch every couple of years to go see something new, to explore a new area, to just move. Yeah, so I just felt like after five years in Atlanta, it was time. I was getting that itch. I knew I wanted to move somewhere, but I didn't know where and what better place than the Middle East, where it's sunny every day. There's only two seasons, literally, basically like springish fall and summer. Like it's either what they consider cold is like 60s or 120 degrees, super hot. So I hate the cold, I hate the snow. I'm like, what better time to move to the Middle East than in the winter when you guys are getting blizzards and snow and negative two degree weather. I've been wearing shorts and short sleeves. So that's another reason why I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity for me. Another reason I, why I decided to move here is safety. I mean, as you guys know, the USA has gotten completely outrageous when it comes to crime, shootings, killings, kidnappings, sex trafficking, you name it. It's just awful, in my opinion, especially Atlanta. You just, as a single woman living there alone, I never felt truly safe to go anywhere, to go home, to go to the gas station, to do basic activities like grocery shop, you just really have to always be prepared for anything. And that feeling of always not feeling safe everywhere you go, it was just increasing my anxiety. I felt like I wasn't just truly happy where I was because I couldn't just be out and about how I'm used to being. So that was another thing that really pushed me here. Bahrain has been named one of the number one safest places in the world to live. If you look around this country, there is no gun violence. You barely see police officers because there really isn't much crime in general. Everyone obeys the laws of the land. They, you know, do what's right. And just being able to be in a place where you feel safe. I can be out to two, three o'clock in the morning by myself taking an Uber without having to send it to five, six different people and tell them to watch my location the whole way home. That's a level of peace that you just cannot buy literally. So those are three um, reasons. And then another reason I decided to move is because my job is fully remote. So it's different from having a work from home job, a fully remote job, especially at an international country, I mean company, I'm sorry. You really can live anywhere. So I'm grateful to have a company where we have headquarters here, um, in London and Europe, we have headquarters in Atlanta, we have people all over the world, and we are allowed to work and live wherever we want. So when you have that type of opportunity, you have to jump on it, you have to take it. It's not often where you can tell your job, I'm moving to the Middle East, and they say, go ahead with the same pay and nothing changed for me. So I felt like this, it just, and honestly, everything aligned perfectly for me to make this move, to be able to do something beneficial for me, to be able to save money for this entire year and be able to come back better than ever, more financially in a better place than I ever have been and more well-rounded, more experienced. Like every time you visit a new country and you experience a different culture, you're just learning different things and you're being able to take that and put it in your toolbox and it just opens your eyes to the world and how to navigate the world. So I just feel like ultimately this was a no-brainer decision. So once I decided, okay, I wanna move, then it was like, how do I prepare for this move? So. Naturally, when I went back to the States, I started looking at my lease, figuring out when it ended, figuring out, okay, what do I need to do? Where am I going to put my stuff? I put most of my stuff in storage in Atlanta. So all of my stuff is in storage, except for the clothes and the things that I brought over here with me. Um, I ended my lease. Once it was over, I didn't resign. And I have family keeping my dog, Mickey Mouse, that y'all have seen before in um, past videos. So it was really easy for me because I don't have any super ties to anywhere. I don't have kids. I'm not married. So it wasn't a lot of things that were holding me back to Atlanta. It was more so just, you know, buttoning up all of the buttons, cutting all of the ties to Atlanta, cutting off all of my utilities, things of that nature. But I'm not gonna lie y'all, it was a pretty seamless move for me. So another question people asked was about apartment hunting and rent prices living here in the Middle East and Bahrain to be exact. And as I mentioned before, I moved here because my parents already live here. They have a four bedroom condo and it was just them. And honestly, it was just my dad because my mom wasn't living here before I came. So it was a no brainer. I didn't come out here and get my own place. I came here to save money. So I'm living with my parents. I have my own room. There's still an empty room, actually two other empty rooms in our condo. So 
like I said, it's a little bit of adjustment, but living with your parents as an adult, I would say is a lot better than living with your parents as a child, for sure. Me and my parents, we have a don't ask, don't tell policy. They don't really ask me where I'm going, where I'm coming home, who I'm with. They understand that I need that space as an adult. And it's honestly been seamless. I grocery shop, they grocery shop. I cook, they cook. We both contribute in that manner. And honestly, the military is paying my dad's bills anyway. So it's a win-win situation for all of us. So yes, I didn't have to go apartment hunting or apartment shopping for anything. Um, I was grateful and blessed to be able to just come here and live rent free with my parents. However, if I had to have done that, I would say the housing market is beautiful here, y'all. The, the apartments and the condos are just something that is unreal. And the prices are really not bad compared to the U.S. I've been asking a lot of my friends that live here, like, how much is your rent? How much is your rent? A lot of them pay like a thousand to fifteen hundred, and I'm telling you, the places they have, you wouldn't be able to get less than three, four thousand dollars in Atlanta at least, or in the U.S. So, cost of living, you would think it's a lot higher, but it really isn't. But it's one of these places where you're not gonna find people that just come to live here just for the fun of it. A lot of people here are tied to the military in some sort, or they're contractors, or they were once tied to the military or contracting, and. That when they got here they just loved it so they decided to stay bahrain in the middle east is not necessarily a place that people just up and move to however you can it is possible i have a 10-year visa um so as long as i leave the country for one day that's enough to renew my visa so you can go to abu dhabi or a neighboring country and you can continue to renew that 10-year visa and stay here really as long as you want um so it's definitely a place that's livable you could definitely do it but i'm just letting you know that a lot of people that are here have ties to the military in some sort but people move to dubai all the time people move out here all the time so definitely do your research it's a beautiful country to live in i would suggest it to anybody who wants to be somewhere that's safe that's beautiful that has a lot to do that's warm this is the place to be and if y'all see people running around me outside it's because there's a track on the outside of our building so they're running around the track just fyi this is a beautiful building so we basically live in twin towers tower one and tower two if you are a resident you have access to both tower one has a pool jacuzzi gym that are all co-ed and also has a game room um, and a studio room and then tower uh, two which is the one that we live in has a pool jacuzzi steam room sauna all of that but it's girls only so they have the same facilities but the one in tower one is co-ed the one in tower two is girls only and then we also have a movie theater in our tower and then there's two outdoor pools that are outside in between both towers that everyone has access to it's really like living in a resort y'all it's so beautiful they keep it spotless you don't see any type of glittering anywhere it's always sparkling clean i mean you just really can't beat it the fact that we have Oh, I, another thing I don't know if I mentioned, but we have cleaners. No matter where you live in the Bahrain, you have cleaners that come twice a week to clean your place. So, and it's included in your rent, it's included in your mortgage. So, everywhere you go, it's just beautiful. It's spotless, it's clean. Um, it really, the customer service is top tier. You feel like you're constantly being catered to. Like, you feel like royalty. I'm not going to lie. Living here, you feel like royalty. The complete opposite of how you're treated and how you feel in a lot of places in the U.S. Another reason why I love living here. And there's also a market that's really cool because it's right across the street from where we live. I wouldn't even say across the street. Like, it's in the same building. Um, and they sell everything you need from seasonings to food to meat, milk, uh, diapers, dog food you name it makeup everything you need cleaning supplies is all in the market that's connected to our building so it's super super convenient there's been a number of times i've been in the middle of cooking like dang it i forgot to get such and such from the store i'll keep my stuff on or put it on low or tell my mom to wash it run downstairs to the market and y'all it's, it's just i don't know if i'm coming back y'all i love it here too much groceries are high as hell here y'all i'm not even gonna lie to you especially imported groceries if you want some hot cheetos or some Red Bull or something that has an American brand on it, you're gonna pay the price. Like I paid $8 for bakeable cookies. Y'all know the cookies that come in like 24 pack, blue pack, you know, the cookies that you put in the oven that's already pre-packaged. Yeah, $8 for that. It's like six, $7 for a can of biscuits. If you go watch my TikTok, this is a good reason to subscribe to my TikTok. If you go watch my TikTok on my grocery shopping to, uh, tour, go and grocery shopping with me, I call out some of the things, like a carton of eggs is like $8 here. So groceries are one of those things where you see a significant difference in price. I'm not gonna lie to you. Groceries are high. How is it working with the eight hour time difference? I think that 
it was challenging in the beginning, but you have to remember, this is my second time coming over here. So this is my second Christmas I've spent here, my second New Year's I've spent here. So I knew what to expect this time compared to last time. It was definitely a bigger adjustment, but I'm working over here from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m., which is about, uh, I think, 5.30 a.m. to like 1 p.m. Eastern time. So I did it so that I'm off by 1 p.m. I'm not working after 9 p.m this time but i'm also having to a two to three hour gap during my work day with the people that i worked with in atlanta so that if we need to have meetings or collaborate on anything that is attainable and that is doable so it's really not hard but i think it all depends on your job how flexible they are my job allowed me to choose my hours as long as i had time that i was able to meet with every team and i have teams in europe and london so th those meetings are a lot easier for me to have now because we're closer in time versus when i was in the u.s and i mean my meetings with people in the u.s are a little bit more challenging because sometimes i do have to stay up late there are days i have meetings at 11 p.m 12 p.m because it's 4 30 5 p.m back home However, it's 100% doable. I actually prefer it. I said this in one of my TikToks. Being able to have my mornings to myself, y'all, has been life-changing. I'm not a morning person. And when I say that, that doesn't mean I don't get up early because I think that's a little bit childish to say I'm not a morning person. But I'm not a morning person in the sense of I don't like to interact with other humans in the morning, y'all. Like I like that to be my solitude time, for me to get myself together, for me to go to the gym, for me to meditate, for me to pray. Whatever it is I like to do in the mornings, I like to do it in solitude. So being that I don't have to wake up and immediately get on meetings and immediately interact with coworkers and immediately answer emails, that has made the world of difference in my life because I'm able to really take that time for self-care in the morning. I've been being able to go to the gym, eat breakfast every single day. I have plenty of time to do that and I'm not working until afternoon. So I've already done all of the things I need to do for myself before I even get on the first meeting, before I start the first email. So it's for me, I think the schedule is amazing. I wish that even when I went home, I would be able to work this type of schedule because it really, really does work for me. And I tend to be a night owl anyway. So I like to work at night. I stay up late. It just works. But yeah, the time difference hasn't been bad. I would say the first two weeks with the eight hour time difference is tough. I mean, you're having to get adjusted to jet lag and your sleep schedule and it is it's a little difficult. But after two weeks, you pretty much got it. And I mean, it's just, it's natural at this point. Excuse me if I sound stuffy. I do feel a little sick. Um, it's the weather change and the air conditioning, and we're going to get into that as well. But yeah, sorry, but I just wanted to hurry up and get this video out because I've been saying I'm going to do it, and I've been putting it off. And this week is um, a down week for my job. My entire job is closed the last week of the year every year. So what better time than to make content? So another thing that's different is their work week is from Sunday to Thursday. So everyone here works Sunday nights, well, Sunday mornings like usual, and they work on Thursdays. Friday, they are completely off, and Saturday, they are completely off. So Thursday nights are like their Friday nights here. Most people go out on Thursday nights. Saturdays are like their Sundays. So most people are winding down the weekend, getting ready to go back to work on Sunday, if that makes sense. So Sunday through Thursday, they work. Fridays is also the day that they go to church or to the mosque. We go to church on Fridays as far as on base, Christianity or baptism, whatever you are, you will do that on Fridays here because Sundays is a work day. That's also different, but I like it. I'm not going to lie. Having Thursday, I mean, having Fridays and Saturdays as the weekend, I think it makes sense. Are there black people here? Yes, y'all. There is a lot of black people here. There's honestly more black people here than you would think. Um, beyond the fact that a lot of people in the military here are black and a lot of the contractors here are black, we are neighboring with Africa. So a lot of people from Africa decide to come move here. There's a lot of Asians here as well from like Thailand, um, Indonesia, uh, I wouldn't say Vietnam, but there's a lot of Asians here as well. But there's a ton of black people, y'all. Like everyone I hang out with is black. All my friends are black. There's a lot of black men and women on both sides. So yes, there's a ton of black people here. Um, and honestly, because it is an island and it's a small island surrounded by water, it's super easy to make friends. I mean, you go out, you see the same people, you, you can easily mix and mingle. I love the fact that we're surrounded by water every single day. I can wake up and see the water and the waves and the beach. And if you know anything about me, 
I am a water girl. My sign is Capricorn. I love water. I love the beach. That is my favorite place on earth. How strict are the laws here? So I mentioned this in some of my TikToks and it's one of those things where this obviously is an Islamic country. They practice um, Islam. They are Muslims here. You see a lot of people wearing the full hijab or the full um, headdress and it is one of those things where it's mostly about respect. So if you are not Muslim, they're not expecting you to wear that unless you're going into a holy place like a mosque or somewhere that is, you know, expected for you to be respectful. You are not expected to wear any of those garments. However, if you decide to wear them, they are definitely open and willing to teaching you about their religion and culture. But to say they're super strict, no, you can still dress how you want to dress wherever you are. But it's about respect. So if you go out wearing a mini skirt or this strapless dress anywhere but the club, you're definitely going to get stares. People are going to be looking at you like, oh my goodness, what is she wearing? But I mean, do people not do that in the U.S. anyway? However, when you're over here and it's such a conservative country, you just tend to want to dress more conservative, conservatively. Sorry, y'all. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's one of those things where like, I tend to shy away from some of my more skimpy clothes. I honestly left a lot of them at home because it's just, I wouldn't do that even though no one's going to say nothing to me. It's about respecting their culture and their religion and their country. Um, but going to the club, girl, y'all can wear whatever you wear to the club in Atlanta, New York, LA, wherever you live, you can wear it here. The clubs here play a lot of American music. If you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, you'll see in my stories, we play everything future to little baby to anything you want to hear they play it here people dress the same exact way wear heels wear skirts and dresses and whatever you want to wear so it's not strict to where you to what you think it is but i will say and let me add to this restaurants do not serve alcohol in by heart at all so if you want alcohol you either have to be at a restaurant lounge which would also serve shisha as they call it but hookah as we call it in the u.s um, they would usually have a full bar, bartenders, and you would know that they serve alcohol, or you would need to be at a club. If you go to a regular restaurant like Cheesecake Factory or P.F. Chang's, they're not going to be selling any type of alcohol because it's a family-oriented place. They try to definitely protect their kids from any of that nature. So they'll have cocktails or mocktails on the menu, but just know that none of them are going to ever have alcohol in it. Alcohol is really reserved for places that are 18 and up, 21 and up for the adults. Um, you'll notice here and i mean any country in the middle east is how serious religion is to them and i think that also plays a lot into the peace the no violence i mean they pray five times a day here and there's a loud horn that sounds throughout the entire country you know when it's time to pray you know when people are praying as a lot of people know they have pretty much a month of just downtime to pray and fast and be with their families called ramadan in the spring where the entire country pretty much shuts down and not much you can do there's no drinking there's no partying you can't even eat until after dark so religion is top priority in this country and they make a lot of time for family and religion and when it comes to the garments that people wear sometimes you'll see women that have their whole entire face exposed sometimes you'll see women that only have like a small amount you can only see their eyes sometimes you'll see women where it's completely covered and you cannot see any part of them and when it comes down to that it's up to your discretion as a Muslim, as I've been told, and granted, if I'm speaking on this wrong, I do not mean any type of disrespect. I'm only telling you what I've been taught by Bahrainians here, by asking questions, by doing research. I am no way, shape, and form an expert on the Muslim religion. I think it's super fascinating. I respect it so much, but fact check me because I only know so much. I've only been living here so long, but they did tell me the difference between seeing some of their faces, some of their eyes, some, some of them have nothing showing. It's just about you know your commitment with Allah, how dedicated you want to be. There's no right way or wrong way. However, those who cover their, them, themselves entirely feel like they're closer to Allah by doing that. And some people feel like, okay, maybe it's not necessary to cover their entire face, but they cover everything else. So that's completely up to their discretion, but religion is definitely a top priority here. Like I said, you will see most women here covered from head to toe when they go out in public. Um, like I said, even if you are out in the mall or you're in the souk or in Gold City, if the horn goes off and it's time to pray, they will pull out their prayer rugs in the middle of the store and pray. They do not care where they are. They do not care who's around. And they put their face down and bow down to Allah. And I think that is just an amazing act of, you know, just 
worship and just obedience because that is their top priority always. So now I'm gonna talk about what are the biggest adjustments living in the Middle East. And I have a list of things. The metric system. So the metric system, I should have listened a little bit better in school when they taught us the metric system from kilometers to miles, from inches and centimeters to Celsius and Fahrenheit. All of that stuff matters when you cross those borders, y'all. And if you didn't pay attention, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download an app that will do it for you. And even conversions for money. It's important because everywhere you go, nothing is the same. So for instance, when you're cooking on a stove or an oven, Everything is in Celsius, it's not in Fahrenheit. So when you normally set your temperature to 350 degrees, you need to know what that converts to in Celsius in order to be able to cook at the right temperature or you're gonna burn all your food. Um, when it comes to the air conditioning, which is why I'm sick, um, it's in Celsius, it's not in Fahrenheit. So I keep my room on 25 degrees Celsius, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit in the US, which seems hot, but I promise you y'all, it still be cold. It's be so cold in my room, but you have to know that metric system in order to convert everything. Um, when you're food shopping, it's not um, per pound when you're buying shrimp or when you're buying chicken. It's per, um, what is it by? Kilogram. It's per kilogram. So it might say two or four dollars per kilogram. You need to know what a kilogram is to a pound so that you're able to get the right amount of food. I'm speeding on the car, y'all. When I drove over here the first time, as soon as I started going, I'm like, wait, I'm already going 100 miles per hour, but it's not miles per hour, it's kilometers per hour. So you need to know the difference because 100 miles per hour is not the same as 100 kilometers per hour. So things of that nature, I would say, is a huge difference over here because it affects your day-to-day -day living. It affects things that you don't even think about in the US that you definitely have to think twice about once you get here. But I will say it's a good refresher on your skills and on your metric system because once you start doing it every single day, you start to learn it and it just becomes second nature. Um, another thing that's really different since we're speaking about cars is the laws of the road, y'all. So a lot of countries, they drive on the opposite side of the car. In this country, you can drive, you, they drive on the same side as the US. You actually don't have to take any type of test. You can drive with your normal driver's license. However, there are no rules of the law or the land of the road in Bahrain. People drive insane. You think they drive insane in New York? There's no rules, no lanes, no turning lanes, no barely any lights. I mean, there's lights, but they don't pay attention to them. If they see a yellow light, that means green and that means go, and they're gonna honk at you every time. Another thing is there's no car seats, y'all. People have their kids hanging out the windows. Like literally, I lied to you not. Hanging out the windows, hanging out the, um, the sunroofs, they're never in car seats. And it's crazy to me, but that's something that's totally different as well. Another big difference is you have the voltage. So you have to use what's called a transformer. And I will plug in a picture because I don't have one right here with me. If I was upstairs in my house, I would have one, but maybe I'll just show one later in the video. If you wanna use any type of appliance that came from the United States, you pretty much have to plug it into a transformer unless it's dual voltage. Um, and the only way you'll know that is by reading the little tags that come on your straighteners or your hair dryers or whatever. But 90% of the time, you're going to need a transformer. And if you don't utilize a transformer, you're going to blow a fuse. You're going to set the whole house on fire, honestly. So it's imperative that you use it. Anytime I straighten my hair, curl my hair, blow dry my hair, um, cook using certain appliances, rice cookers, things of that nature that were bought in the U.S., I have to plug them into a transformer. And that was something that was also a little difficult to get used to. You're used to just plugging stuff right into the outlet, um, but you can't just do that. You have to utilize a transformer. And even if it is dual voltage, but you bought it in the US, you still have to use a um, converter. And I can show what one of those look like as well. But the outlets here, the, the prongs are not the same as the prongs in the US. So you can't really ever just stick something into the outlet here if you bought it in the US. Now, if you buy certain appliances or certain curlers and things here, you absolutely can, but then when you go take it back to the US, it's gonna be the same thing. It's not gonna work in the US because our voltage system is just 
different. So that's something else that was kind of, you know, different, took a little bit of time getting used to. Um, like I mentioned once before, the weather is definitely different. There's really like two seasons. Well, we, we, we would consider spring or fall, so the low would be maybe like 60s and the highs would be like mid 70s. And then summer, we're talking about 90s every day to up to 120, 125 degrees. Do not forget this is the desert. There's minimal grass here, if not any grass here. You don't see grass here, it's all sand here. So that leads me to my next point when it's windy, you can see the trees blowing behind me. There are major sandstorms here, y'all. Like you have to wear sunglasses. If you're a contact wearer like me, you're not gonna make it without sunglasses. I leave the house no matter if it's daytime, nighttime, with sunglasses all the time because sand particles are so small, they will scratch your eyes, they will get in your eyes, it will give you an eye infection. There are sandstorms here. So that's something else that is different for sure. Um, shorter days, they, they, have, they definitely have shorter days here. The sun usually goes down around 5-ish, 5.30 every single day, and they do not participate in daylight savings. So it's short days year round, um, but the sun rises pretty early, so it works out. Uh, um, what else? Healthcare and education, y'all, this blew me away, but it honestly makes sense, and we'll get into this a little bit. So. Healthcare is 100% free here for everybody. I mean, whether it's just going to the doctor for a boo-boo or having a baby, it's free. Education is also free here for everybody, not just um, primary and secondary education, but even college education. It's free for everyone. So that leads me to my next point where there's almost zero poverty here. You don't see homeless people you don't see poor people in general. You don't see people living on the streets, sleeping on the streets. You just do not see it. And if you do see someone that is begging or asking for money, it's usually someone who has come into this country from like Thailand or from somewhere else. It's never really Bahrainis. And when I've talked to my Bahraini friends about it, they let me know that, you know, they get a lot of assistance from the government. When they have babies, they get, you know, a gift from the government. Unlike us who are spending thirty, forty thousand dollars to have a baby and they're charging us what, two, three thousand dollars just to do skin to skin, it's completely free for them. And I talked to my mom about this and other people, and it's like if you really think about it, when you're not fighting over resources, when you're not struggling to just eat, when you're not, you know, having to make ends meet with the smallest amount of money that you have when you don't have to worry about your next meal or if there's gonna pay you're gonna pay rent and your roof being over your uh, head next month you don't have as much violence you don't have as much poverty if you don't have poverty you know it's one of those things where they live with their families until they get married so their families are constantly helping each other building each other up and you just do not see it it's honestly amazing to see but it's also one of those things that gets you thinking like well, dang, if we were like that in the U.S., maybe our entire world would be better. Maybe we wouldn't be killing and shooting and, you know, stealing and all of the other things that have to happen. And I'm not saying they're right, but a lot of these things stem from lack of resources, fighting for the small resources that we have in the hood, in the ghettos, and in, in the trailer parks, wherever you want to say. When you have limited resources, people will act like animals. People have no choice because we are living to survive, not living to enjoy life. So that's something that is amazing to see over here and it plays a lot into the safety of this country. They have a lot of resources. They have a lot of help from their government and healthcare and education being free is something that makes me never want to raise my kids in the US. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Question, people ask, do they have waxing out here? Yes, y'all. So I found a new salon. Look at my nails. I'll add a close up. And if you follow me on TikTok, you've already seen them. But I found a salon that does nails, lashes. My girl got me right. She did me a full set. I paid y'all $130 for these nails and lashes combined. Unbelievable. So yes, they have nails. They have lashes. They do waxes, full Brazilians. Everything you need in the U.S., they do it here. You can find it. So... There has been no difference when it comes to that. Last question I think is really just how long will I be here? And I don't know y'all, like my dad is supposed to be here for the rest of the year, honestly, until probably late fall. So I will 100% be here until then. But I really wanna find a way to extend my stay here. If never, if I don't have to come back ever, I probably won't. And I say that um, knowing that I can always visit, I'm always gonna be a citizen of the United States. It's extremely hard to become a citizen of Bahrain. You have to live here at a minimum of 25 years, contribute like a million dollars to their um, 
country. So it's a lot of different steps that you have to do to, in order to even become a citizen. So that would never happen. But just in general, I just don't believe that everything we've been taught in the U.S. is the way of the way of the land. This white picket fence dream that they sell us and it's supposed to be the greatest place on earth. Once you have experiences and live other places, you really realize it's not. And I want my kids to be able to grow up with freedom, with safety, with exposure to new cultures and new things. I think the way that it's shaped me and the way that I'm able to just adapt in any country, any state, any friend group I'm in is imperative to being able to just move through this life and be successful. Drop me off in any country and I will find a way. So I think that I really want my kids to be able to explore that, have the opportunity to be able to live in other countries, but also be able to go to school and not have to worry about losing their life at school, be able to go to the movie theater, be able to go hang out with their friends and play hide and seek without having to worry about being kidnapped. It's just like the level of peace, y'all, that you have in certain countries. It's just, it makes you not want to ever come back because you don't have to constantly be scared to just live. And it's insane to me because growing up in the United States at some point, you realize that everything we're taught is not necessarily true. When you think about everything we're taught about the Middle East, you automatically think about the deserts and the bombings and killings and all of this stuff. And granted, I'm not taking away from any wars that have happened here, any of the things that are happening in certain countries in the Middle East. However, every country is not that way. I just want you guys to know that. That's the update on my life, y'all, for everyone wondering. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to uh, drop them in the comments. I will definitely respond and answer them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, y'all. I promise I'm going to be doing more videos, more consistency throughout the year. Um, I'm really in my content bag, so more to come. Um, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on TikTok and Instagram so we can be besties. Like, I definitely interact and post a lot more on my TikTok and Instagram, so if you want to keep up with what I'm doing over here, follow me there. But other than that, I think that's it. Love y'all. Bye.